The Simpsons is one of those shows where when I say I love it, I'm really only talking about a handful of seasons. Seasons 1 through 8 tend to be my go-to loop whenever I want to watch some Simpsons, and everything after that is a complete mystery to me. Early Simpsons is one of the funniest animated comedies ever put on TV, while later Simpsons feels like an open mic night at a comedy club called Purgatory, where Nick Swartz is headlining. Okay, I'll tell you a joke. All right, here we go. So one of my favorite things, I don't have kids. I don't have kids. Anybody here have kids? Anybody here have kids? What the F? Let's go. Refund! We apologize for uh, what you've seen tonight. Please email the box office. Uh, we'll be... Uh, responding to inquiries and processing credits and refunds. Okay, so maybe later Simpsons isn't this bad. Frankly, I don't think anything could be this bad, but I wouldn't go out of my way to watch either of these things. And long before I ever saw a full season of The Simpsons, I did go out of my way to watch another show that piqued my interest, and that show was The Critic. The Critic is a show about Jay Sherman and his complicated life as a schlubby, pretentious, divorced film critic who hosts a TV show Show called Coming Attractions. The Critic was only around for two seasons and a few choppy webisodes, but it is stuck in my head as one of the funniest and coziest adult animated shows I've ever seen. There's just something about it that makes me want to curl up in a blanket with some hot cocoa or hot tea and just kick back and relax. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just cozy. The Critic and The Simpsons are two of my favorite adult animated shows of all time, and while they share a lot of similarities that will get into a little bit later, their fates couldn't have been any more different. The critics struggled through its entire run. It got moved from network to network, its art style was changed for the second season, and they had to do a clip show for their series finale to save money. Meanwhile, I don't think anyone could cancel The Simpsons if they wanted to. I think at this point it's just a constant entity in our universe. But even though these two shows lasted for drastically different amounts of time, Time, there was a time when their fates were intertwined. And this kind of intertwination can only lead to one thing. What is this? A crossover episode? The Critic was created by former Simpsons writers and producers Al Jean and Mike Reyes. And given the show's similar approaches to comedy, it made sense for them to cross over. But only kind of. And this sort of comes down to personal preference, to which mine is I do not love crossover over episodes all that much. I think they're kind of tacky and they have a lot of potential for cringe inducing moments. Just not my go-to thing. Don't love it. Even if it is two shows that I love like The Critic and The Simpsons. However, in the case of The Critic crossing over with The Simpsons, the real reason this was being done was because The Critic was struggling to find an audience and after getting canceled over at ABC, The Critic was moved to Fox. So it was going to air now directly after The Simpsons. We'll thaw you out the second they discover the cure for 17 stab wounds in the back. On a brand new Simpsons. Then, why is the critic suddenly irresistible? I love you. I love you. I love you the most. Queen Latifah? Wrong office. Tomorrow, beginning at 8 on Fox 5. So, now that The Simpsons was already going to lead into The Critic, why not do a little crossover episode to help bolster a show like The Critic that is not only similar to The Simpsons in terms of comedy, but also comes from former Simpsons writers and producers. Help your buddies out! Just do a crossover episode. Given the situation The Critic was in, I honestly think that this is an okay concept for a crossover episode. At least it makes sense given what's going on. It's not just being a crossover for the sake of being a crossover. However, and I'm going to say it again, it's still a crossover episode. And that seems to have been 
the largest hurdle for one specific person to get over. And that person was, of course, Matt Groening. Matt Groening, or as I'm sure most of you know him as, the inventor of The Simpsons, was not big on the idea of doing a crossover with The Critic, as he felt fans would see it as a cynical corporate advertisement that would sully the good name of The Simpsons. Now, in 2024, we've seen The Simpsons sullied dozens upon dozens of times. In fact, it might be an uncountable number of times at this rate between all the celebrity cameos and, of course, the Homer shake. Do the Homer shake! Homer shake! But this critic crossover was going to happen in 1995, during season six, and this was back when The Simpsons was one of the most groundbreaking and hilarious shows on television. There was a name to Sully at this point in The Simpsons run, and Matt Groening was afraid a crossover with the critic would do just that. Sully it, I mean, he thought it would Sully it. Matt Groening went as far as publicly criticizing the decision to do a crossover with the critic as well as having his name removed from the episode. Man, if only Matt Groening could have his name removed from that other thing he didn't want it to be on. Now, I get not wanting to do a crossover in order to protect the integrity of a show, but Matt Groening comes across as a petty little baby in this story to me, especially when you remember that this crossover episode was coming out during the sixth season of The Simpsons. You know, back when the show was actually really, really good. If any show could pull off a good crossover episode that didn't feel forced or cringy, it was gonna be the team behind The Simpsons. They could figure it out. But Matt Groening didn't care how good the crossover between the critic and The Simpsons was, he just disagreed with it fundamentally and on principle, which at the very least I can respect. But despite Matt Groening's best efforts to get this episode pulled from airing, the crossover episode did in fact get made and it was released under the title A Star is Burns. Now don't get me wrong, there are moments in the critic crossover episode that feel a bit forced. Well, I won the belting contest at work. Uh, very nice. Nice, Homer. But the story of this episode works perfectly fine on its own, and frankly, it doesn't even really feel like a crossover episode. Even when you look at the title, it has nothing to do with the critic. In fact, it's a movie parody which works within the actual plot of the episode. Springfield has no culture, so they put together a film festival and invite a film critic to town to join the judges panel. The film critic is, of course, Jay Sherman from The Critic, and while the episode does spend some time getting to know his character, the real focus of A Star is Burns is on the town of Springfield and all of their attempts to make their own films. Seeing this huge cast of characters coming up with their own films that give little glimpses into their characters is so much goddamn fun, and it just works as a Golden Age Simpsons plot. It works for these characters, even without Jay Sherman from The Critic being there. Get me Steven Spielberg. He's unavailable. Then get Get me his non-union Mexican equivalent. Mr. Burns is making an ego project where he equates himself to God while Barney makes an artsy black and white film about his lonely, fucked up being. Don't cry for me, I'm already dead. There are a ton of great jokes and character moments that make this episode feel right at home in this era of The Simpsons. Are you saying boo or Burns? I was saying boo-earns. But of course, this begs the question, why on earth does this work so well? And unlike some of my other videos, the answer this time around is pretty simple. The Simpsons and The Critic may look and sound drastically different, but in terms of comedy, they're very similar. Jay Sherman mixes in just fine with the broader cast of The Simpsons because He's just as eccentric and interesting as the rest of the town. Jay Sherman is essentially a Simpsons character. He was created by Simpsons writers and producers after all, except this one particular character from The Simpsons just so happens to also have his own show that is completely separate within their universe, or I guess outside their universe. He's the same, but in a different setting, basically. You just take a character from Springfield, put him into a different show. The Critic and The Simpsons 
seasons seem to mesh together pretty dang well, and it made for a really entertaining episode with a lot of memorable moments. But as I'm sure many of you know, the critic is no longer on the air. This crossover episode didn't do anything to help save the critic, but I honestly don't think it was trying to do the critic any favors apart from informing Simpsons fans about the show's existence, which is, again, part of the reason why this episode works so well despite it being a crossover episode. It's not trying to advertise another show to Simpsons fans, it's just showing what these two shows would be like if they were to interact with each other, if Jay Sherman were to interact with the characters in Springfield. A Star is Burns, which is getting progressively harder to say as this video goes on, is just a really good episode of The Simpsons that happens to have that guy from that other canceled TV show in it for some reason. It really is strange that such a solid episode caused so much controversy behind the scenes of The Simpsons. Matt Groening's temper tantrum about A Star is Burns is well known amongst fans of The Simpsons, but the controversy came and went just about as fast as The Critic did. The crossover didn't wind up saving The Critic, and it also didn't doom The Simpsons. It was just a weird little chapter in the big book of American adult animation where I always wonder, what if? What if The Critic got a third season with proper marketing and funding? What if The Simpsons never aired the crossover episode because of Matt Groening? What if Matt Groening had washed his feet before getting on that flight with Jeff Epstein? What ifs are all well and good, but at a certain point, you just have to accept the reality of a situation. The critic is dead, and everything is worse now. But hey, let's not end on a sour note. I'll send you all off with a little joke I heard at the Purgatory Comedy Club last week. What did Jeff Epstein's enslaved masseuse say about Matt Groening's feet after being forced to give him a foot rub? It stinks. All right, that might be seen as bad taste, but don't worry. I did actually learn something from our episode today. See this, and fixed. There we go, now I'm safe. See you, everybody.